Hey, what up squad? It's your boy KFlow. And in this video, we're going to be reassembling the front diff with new 488 gears as well as new front lockers. Now let's get this thing started. If you're new to this channel, my name is KFlow and this channel makes the most in-depth Toyota Tacoma DIY tutorials. So make sure you smash that like, subscribe, and hit that bell while you're at it. So let's just do a quick recap, guys. In the last video, we removed and disassembled the front diff. So in this video, we're going to be installing the new 488 core along with the front lockers, as well as reassemble all the piece parts that go onto that front diff and put that whole thing onto the truck. This video is also part four of the regearing series. And if you haven't watched the first three videos, make sure you watch them. And I recommend that you guys stick around to the end of this video because I'll be going over the proper break-in procedures with the new gears. Now let's get to the garage. So what I'm gonna do is reassemble all the piece parts onto this new diff. And I'm going to torque everything at the end once everything's assembled. Now I will be reassembling these bolts with just a tiny bit of anti-seize. Seized bolts are very tough to deal with, so just putting a tiny bit of anti-seize will prevent that in the future if I have to do a uh, disassembly. So now we're here at this axle housing and what I'm going to do now is clean up these surfaces with a razor blade and then clean up that area with some acetone. So if you did end up disassembling the four wheel drive actuator, you got to make sure this collar is positioned this way. And when you put back the four wheel drive actuator, these forks here need to ride in between the collar, just like that. Goes in there like this. Remember, don't forget the stub shaft. All right, now cleaning up the stub shaft a little bit with a rag, and then just tapping it in with a rubber mallet. Don't seats properly. I'm spinning this flange in the back to make sure that the stub shaft is engaged properly. Now we can clean the surface with acetone and apply our sealant. Here's the sealant I used for the diff. It's the same one that I used for the rear diff and it will be linked on my Amazon page. So make sure you check that out at amazon.kflow-crib.com. I'm gonna hold the collar with my finger just like that and then put this whole assembly right on top of that. So now I'm cleaning up these surfaces guys with acetone. We can apply the sealant around this area as well. And when we reinstall this four wheel drive actuator, these forks have to be in between the shoulders of the collar that goes and disengages this, uh, this drive shaft here. I'll just clean up these surfaces with acetone. I'll use a little bit of wheel bearing grease around the sides here to help it slide in. Now, tap it in. Now 
And I'll also apply a little bit of wheel bearing grease around this oil seal on the inside. Yeah, I know exactly what you're thinking about, you dirty bastards. I'll start with torquing these down to 37 foot pounds. And these are 19 millimeter bolts we, we tighten down to 80 foot pounds. These two bolts here will tighten down to 64 foot pounds. The four bolts here on the four wheel drive actuator will tighten down to 15 foot pounds. Alrighty guys, now we can put this breather tube assembly. I did end up buying new hoses. That breather tube assembly is to be tightened down to 8 foot pounds. I did also use the creeper to wheel the diff into position before hanging it onto the cinch straps. So I did use a jack to help lift the diff. It was a little bit of a circus act because I was using my legs to operate the jack and then tighten down the straps properly at the same time. So I didn't have too much time last night guys, but I was able to wheel the front diff underneath the truck, raise it, and suspend it onto the straps. So now we're gonna fully mount that diff onto the frame. There we go. So now we can reinstall the front diff mounts. And keep in mind, I do have the front diff drop here, so yours might look a little bit different. And these are 19 millimeters torqued down 100 foot pounds. Now that hex nut that goes in the rear of the diff, that's a 12 millimeter hex that's torqued down to 64 foot pounds. So now we can reinstall that front drive shaft. First, I'm gonna brush off the surface of the opposite side on the flange and apply some anti-seize to make it easier for next time if I do have to pull this off. And these bolts are 14 millimeter bolts tightened down to 65 foot pounds. Don't forget to also apply some blue Loctite on those bolts. Don't forget the washer when reinstalling the nuts and the bolts. Remember, those hardware are to be torqued down in a cross pattern. We can also reinstall that four wheel drive actuator harness. So now don't forget to fish the breather hoses through the bottom of the truck as well. So now we can put in the CV axles guys. So what I'm gonna do first is clean up the bearing surface on this CV axle and apply some wheel bearing grease. So 
So at this point, we can take that CV axle off the jack stand and try to push it by hand into the diff. We'll have to push it as far as we can before we start hammering it in. Now I will use a pry bar and pretty much get it into the grooves there so that this whole thing can be punched into the diff. You can push it back and forth to make sure that it's secure. So now let's reinstall the lower control arm, the tie rod, and the sway bar. First, we'll jack up the lower control arm until the truck just starts barely lifting off the jack stand. Now we can pull down on the upper control arm to get the steering knuckle to work with that pivot on the lower control arm. We can do this by hand, and if it's too tough, we can use ratchet straps. I'll apply a little bit of anti-seize on these bearing surface here to make it easier to remove in the future. Because tire rods are definitely removed a lot when you're doing suspension work. Now let's torque down those two 19 millimeter bolts to 118 foot-pounds. We can now tighten down that tie rod, and that's a 21 millimeter castle nut torqued down to 41 foot pounds. Just to note, guys, my tie rod is aftermarket, so your socket size might vary. And now we could also drive in our cotter pin. Now, lastly, for the suspension. All we have to do is reinstall that sway bar end lick and that's an 18 millimeter nut torqued down to 41 foot-pounds. Again, this sway bar end lick is also aftermarket so your soft size might vary. We can now reinstall the skid plate brackets and those are 17 millimeters torqued down to 35 foot-pounds. Now we can install the skid plate, and those are 12 millimeter bolts, and I just hand tighten them. Now we can reinstall the wheels and tighten down those lugs to 85 foot pounds. The wheels have to be torqued down in a star pattern. So last but not least, we'll jack down the truck. So that's pretty much it for the installation of this video guys. You will have to fill up the front and rear diff with the proper lubricant. And I will not be going over the details of that work because I've already made videos on that. So make sure you check those out on this channel. And now, let's get into the break-in procedures. I did buy a total of 3 gallons of lubricant for this job, because according to East Coast Gear Supply, you're also supposed to change the lubricant after 500 miles of breaking and these new gears. So the totals, if you remember, it's 1.6 quarts for the front and 3.1 quarts for the rears. And upon actually doing this job, I discovered that the front lockers and the rear lockers also does take up extra room so you actually use up less lubricant and roughly 
I counted about one gallon in total instead of the 4.7 quarts. Now there are proper guidelines in order to break in these new gears and these will also be detailed at East Coast Gear Supplies website so make sure you check that out over there. So the first thing on their guideline is that we should be using Lucas 85W140 non-synthetic gear oil and the link where you can get this gear oil that I have in the gallons is on my Amazon page so make sure you check that out amazon.kflow-crib.com So the second part of the guideline is they recommend driving lightly for the first 15 and 20 minutes and then giving the diff a break for about 20 to 25 minutes so that they can cool down properly. You guys silly? I'm still gonna send it. Now the third part of the guideline is that you should be driving lightly for the first 500 miles. It's going to be tempting not to because your truck will be much torquier. Their fourth guideline states that we should be varying our speeds in the highway and we should not be driving more than 50 miles at a time without letting the diff cool down for about 20 to 25 minutes. Now last but not least, they also say that you're supposed to change the gear oil again after 500 miles of driving with the new gears on. Now they do mention that you're going to have some metal flakes during the drain, but that's totally normal and the oil might come out a little bit darker than usual, but they also say that's totally normal with this type of break-in. So that's pretty much it for the installation of the front diff guys. So you can see this work really isn't that bad. And as I mentioned in the previous video, if it's really tight when you're doing the reinstallation, you can actually remove that driver side bracket and maybe have that give you extra room as you lift it into the frame. So hopefully that helps you out if you do get stuck. Now in my next video, I'll be talking about how to install a new onboard air compressor which will activate the lockers, fill up the tires, and also fill up other things. So make sure you smash that like, subscribe, and hit that bell if you haven't yet. Until next time guys, peace.